Hey, it's Rift Nugget number five. Uh, Chat GPT picked this name, not me. I thought it was so silly that I like, you know, I want to keep it. I like it, right? But it's Rift Nugget as in like short sort of nuggets, right? Not boulders. If, you know, if I called it Rift Boulder, that would be like my longer 20, 30 minute lessons on YouTube. These are just Rift Nuggets, a little bit shorter, easier to digest, okay? So I uh, remember in the last one, I talked about the um, one five, three triad arpeggios. They're really beautiful, uh, like this. Uh, easy way to sort of get a nice classical sound if you wanted to. Now, I, the reason I think these are important is because thinking in triads is uh, is really useful in a lot of ways. Um, for, ex most people don't really think about it too much, but for example, um, let's say you wanted to use these arpeggios playing C major 7, okay? So one way you can think about it, remember a C major 7 would be C, E, G, B, right? So when we play this... We are really just playing the triad. But think about it. E, G, B, the third, the fifth, and the seventh is an E minor triad. So that means like E minor over a C bass note is like a C major seventh sound. Does that make sense? There's the root, right? So by combining these, you can get the sound of C major seven. Right? Um, so that's why I think it's important uh, to um, think about triads this way. Uh, you can superimpose them is great. And triads are very simple sounds. So it's sort of a simple sound that can turn into a complicated sound. And I sort of like that concept, all right? So anyway, uh, today I'm gonna, I wrote a little etude and I'm gonna play in a little bit, sort of like a classical sounding E minor etude. Now I'm not a classical guitarist by any uh, means, but um, these arpeggios sort of lend themselves to that. So today we're in E minor, right? E minor is the same as G major, okay? So uh, how can we play G major? <laughs> on the sixth string. Uh, if we go to the lowest, again, B starting on the, um, the the three chord in G would be B minor. And then uh, you go to the fourth string too. This is fine too. So, okay, what we're going to do here, now remember, when we play in a minor key, especially in classical music, well, jazz too, or whatever, really, it doesn't make a difference, we often will turn that five chord into a dominant chord. Um, so in this case, B minor, we're going to turn the B minor triad into a B major triad or a B7 chord, right? Now... But what if we want B7? Well, what would we do? How, what, what arpeggio would we superimpose? What is that? That's D sharp diminished triad. Why? Because that D sharp diminished is gonna be the third, the fifth, and the flat seven of B7. Great sound, right? But another thing that we can do is we can keep going. Uh, so often we can turn um, that B7 into like a B7 flat nine by going like this. So 
what do we have here? B7, sorry, B, D sharp diminished. Up a minor third from that is uh, F sharp diminished. So the sound we're gonna get from that is up like a B7 flat nine sound. Very nice. Okay, so I'm gonna play an, an etude and we're gonna use some of these um, voicings and um, see what we can come up with, okay? So look, uh, first, I'm just gonna do these a little bit at a time. E minor. D sharp diminished. Then I'm gonna play another, I'm not gonna get into these arpeggios, but I'm gonna show it anyways. This would be a, a um, five, three, one arpeggio. That would be the root up there. So this is another way of playing E minor. And then I'm gonna move these two voices down and it'll turn into a B triad. I'll get into more of that later, but in the time being, just kind of learn it if you want to be able to play this. Okay, so then I'm gonna go back to B E minor. Now what happened there? Well, this is the one chord in E minor. E minor. Next is the two chord in E minor. That's going to be F sharp diminished. Next is going to be G, which is in the key. Now what's this? Well, that's G sharp diminished. Why am I using that? Because I want the sound of E7. Remember G sharp over E is going to be the sound of E7, which is super imposing this triad over that bass note. And why do I want E7? Because I'm going to A minor. Then I'm going to play D major, also in the key. But I'm going to turn this into a dominant chord. By going like this. also in the key, right? I'm going to turn this into a dominant chord. I'm going to play F major, which is, I guess, sort of borrowed from the neighboring key. And then by moving this note up a half step, I turn that into F sharp diminished, which is the two chord again in E minor, just like a little trick, harmonic trick. Seven. We like that, right? So five chords. Nice. Then I'm going to go back to E, because we just played the, the dominant chord in a way. It's going to bring us right back to the one chord. Now I'm going to turn this into a two, five, one for the D chord that's in this key. Do the same thing for that G. Turning into a secondary dominant for the C chord that's in the key. Now, I'm going to have a little fun by walking up and putting the diminished chords right under each triad as much as I can to create that that cadence between the fives and the one chords. They're all turn, turning these all into secondary dominance. I'm not gonna do it, because here's the two chord. Which also functions as sort of like a D7 sound for the G chord. Back 
back to the A minor. before. Now I'm going to keep going with these diminished triads to sort of complete the sound. Okay, so um, look at the, the the Roman numeral analysis and you'll sort of see what's going on, right? So, you know, if this is confusing, you want to be able to look at all the chords in the key and look at what the secondary dominants are for all the chords in the key. And that gives you the answers of how to do this and also it just explains to you what's going on. Okay, so let me play this um, and see if I can pull it off, okay? Okay. 